Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. So I have an after action medical report video for you. This one I found on Instagram and this one is a gunshot wound to the hand. Apparently a guy was cleaning his firearm and didn't follow some basic safety rules and shot his hand. He applies a tourniquet. Uh, it's just above the wrist, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, but this is a pretty good one. We've got lots of talking points here, so stay tuned. There is some blood in this video. I do want to thank USCA for sponsoring this video. They provide education and training to prepare you for what happens before, during, and after an act of self-defense. So, what do you guys think? Tourniquet, no tourniquet? Comment below. Let me know if you think you would apply the tourniquet here or you would have just wound packed it or put a My Little Pony Band-Aid on there. Let me know down below. So, a couple of things. I think we have to state the obvious about gun safety here. Uh, making sure the firearm's unloaded, double checking it, uh, never pointing the barrel, anything you don't want to kill, keep your finger off the trigger. Lots of talking points here. Um, there's plenty of gun experts that are talking about that. You can go follow their YouTube channels. Uh, but anyway, gun safety, be remiss if I didn't mention it. So I know a lot of you guys are going to jump on the tourniquet bandwagon about it not being high and tight, okay? We've talked about that before. That yes, you're not wrong for putting a tourniquet high and tight. But this guy has bleeding here uh, at the knuckle region and the hand region. So really, there's no need to put a tourniquet high and tight here. Um, so he applies a tourniquet on the double bone area just above the wrist at least three inches above the injury he's not wrong there either uh, the data does support that you can put a tourniquet on a double bone actually there's less muscle mass they say uh, the experts people that are smarter than me say it works better uh, for putting a tourniquet down lower because you have larger muscle mass up here uh, to collapse um, more people have mo muscle mass i feel like i should flex right there um but you have more muscle mass up the top, so it is takes more pressure to control the bleeding. So down here, you have less muscle mass, and it is easier to control bleeding that way. So nothing wrong with that. But you can see here that there's still blood flow coming out there. So it, we do have some discoloration of the skin, so we're close to a tourniquet here. I don't necessarily know that we have a full tourniquet applied here. Uh, but we're close. You can see that very discolored skin. Uh, if we're there, almost. I would be curious to know if the guy applied direct pressure, maybe with a towel or some gauze here, to see if we get the bleeding control first before going to a tourniquet. They're gonna, I don't know the guy, I can ask him questions, but I would be curious to see, like, alright, did we apply some dressing here to see if we get the bleeding controlled, or did we go straight to a tourniquet? Uh, it kind of helps me do the process. So, what we normally say is apply good solid direct pressure to the wound, and if you can't get the bleeding control, then you apply a tourniquet here. So, gunshot wound to the hand, I'm gonna apply good solid pressure here to attempt to get the bleeding control. If I can't get it controlled, then I would go to a tourniquet. I think a hemostatic agent such as combat gauze or c locks here would work really well uh, because we're not wound packing the hand, okay? There's nothing to wound pack. But you could put the combat gauze or the c locks to apply direct pressure and then the clotting cascades from the body will work its way down to the source. So we're not talking about a lot of muscle mass here in the hand. So I think combat galls or sea locks here, good solid direct pressure may work. If it doesn't work, then yes, you should go to a tourniquet here. So if we look closer here, we do see that he used a soft T from TagMed Solutions. So this version of the soft T has the track system here. So we have a metal windlass that you rotate until the bleeding stops and it goes into the track system, which is supposed to be just an assist. You can see here he didn't quite make it into the triangle, but it did still work, so no problem there. But we should be able to rotate the windlass until bleeding stops, put it into the track system to help assist us get it into the triangle, which locks us in. So I think that's really the good talking points here. Gun safety, apply good solid direct pressure with galls before we put a tourniquet on. Uh, if you have the ability to put combat gauze or C-locks onto the wound, let's apply that. If you can't get the bleeding control, put a tourniquet on. And there's nothing wrong with putting a tourniquet over a double bone area in the arm or the leg, uh, but you can go to a tourniquet after you put direct pressure on there and that's not working. 
So I hope this video helps. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training. Also on a side note, I am super happy about my new helmet. Uh, this is a leather helmet from Mile High Angel. Go check her out on Instagram. Uh, she is awesome. She made this work of art for me uh, and I'm super excited. It's a Mandalorian helmet and black multicam. So I know you guys really want to see it. So look at this. 